What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing our reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter number 22 on November 20th, 2018. This week's Wumbo Size newsletter provides a note about Bitcoin hash rate related to forks and other. <clears throat> shitcoins, summarizes several acceptance goals to the Lightning Network Protocol version 1.1 specification and lists several notable commits in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Monitor fee rates due to activity associated with Bcash, which can use the same mining equipment used for Bitcoin. Blocks on Bitcoin may appear less frequently than expected raising fee rates and causing other effects. However, these conditions may suddenly reverse, providing a period of fast blocks and lower fee rates. See the news section below for more information and recommendations and recommended actions for Bitcoin businesses. Feature news, the Lightning Network Protocol 1.1 goals. Lightning Network protocol developers met in Adelaide for last weekend to determine which changes to adopt for the forthcoming Lightning Protocol Specification 1.1. 30 proposals were accepted at a high level, meaning full specification of each protocol are not necessarily defined or agreed upon yet, but the basic outline of new features is available. Some highlights from the meeting include multi-path payments. The current normal way to make a payment over Lightning Network is using a single path. Alice pays Charlie through her channel to Bob and Bob's channel to Charlie. This works well for small payments where each participant has enough capacity to support the payment. But if we use this mechanism when Alice has 10 open channels, each containing a maximum of 10% of her total hot wallet balance, Alice can only spend at most 10% of her funds at any time. Multipath payments provide a solution to this problem. If Alice wants to spend 15% of her funds, she can send 7.5% to Charlie through her channel with Bob and 7.5% through her channel with Dan, who also has a channel with Charlie. Although the, partially, the partial payments are routed through separate paths, they can each commit to the same hash. Alice would, would have used to send a single payment path, a single path payment. If Charlie receives multiple payments within a reasonable time period that equal or exceed the expected amount, he can guarantee that he'll receive all of them by simply revealing the single pre-image used by all of the hashes. This reuses the same proven security mechanism currently used in single path payments and so does not introduce any new security assumptions. The same mechanism also works if some other party along the path with sufficient channel capacity merges together the partial payment and forwards a single payment along the remainder of the path to Charlie. For more information, see the following lightning dev threats, which often call this feature atomic multipath payments, AMP. And the threats are an early proposal with separate hashes pre-images, something like the currently favored proposal, and a possible and pos a, poss a possibly too optimistic proposal. Dual funded channels. A nice feature of the current implementation is that only one party to the channel needs the initial commitment of any funds to it. For example, Alice opens a channel to Bob with 0.1 Bitcoin and her money and none of Bob's money. This means it is very easy for users to accept new incoming channels. But it also means that channels can only be used in one direction initially. Alice can pay Bob or route payments through Bob, but Alice cannot receive payments from Bob or route or from any routing pass, including Bob until Alice has sent Bob some money. 
This creates a bootstrapping problem. If Alice wants to receive payments via Lightning Network, she has to get people to open new channels to her node, which requires they pay on-chain transaction fees and wait for on-chain confirmations that can take hours. A proposed solution to this problem is to allow dual funded channels. Alice agrees to put 0.1 Bitcoin into a channel with Bob if Bob agrees to open a channel with 0.1 Bitcoin of his own funds. This can cost Bob money, namely on-chain transaction fees, and the opportunity cost of having his funds committed for some time. But Bob also receives the opportunity to earn Lightning Network routing fees for any payment sent to Alice. The basic implementation of dual funding is probably simple. Lightning Network nodes already handle bidirectional payments, but creating an incentive mechanism that can reward capital providers like Bob is still being discussed. For more information, see the following threads 1 to 3. Also, see the section on advertising node liquidity in newsletter number 21. Splicing. You can't currently increase a channel's maximum balance or send some of the channel's funds on-chain to another person without closing the whole channel and opening another between the same parties. Closing one channel and opening another requires completely stopping all payments between the two parties until an appropriate number of on-chain confirmations have been received and for the closed and reopened transactions. Splicing provides a solution where parties cooperatively create an on-chain transaction that adds or subtracts from the channel. When adding funds, splicing in, the funds previously in the channel can continue to be used off-chain without interruption while the new funds can be are being confirmed. When spending funds on-chain, splicing out, the remaining funds can also continue to be used off-chain without interrupting while the on-chain recipient sees no difference from a normal transaction. This allows the wallet UI to make in-chain, in-channel funds part of the total available balance for spending in on-chain transactions so that users do not need to manually change manually manage off-chain and on-chain balances separately. Combining with multi-path payments that allows funds from multiple channels to be intermixed in payments. And this greatly simplifies spending. Users will just click a link, review their invoice and click pay, letting the wallet automatically use any of its available balances for either on-chain payments or an off-chain payment using any number of paths. For more information, see following threads one to three, and also see the news items about channel splicing in newsletter 17. You Vumbo, I Vumbo, we all Vumbo. By agreement among early Lightning Network implementations, currently each channel's capacity is limited by default to about 0.168 Bitcoin about 40 US dollar when defined, currently about $750. This was chosen to help prevent users from putting too much money into unproven software. Several years later, Lightning Network has matured significantly and some participants want to signal that they're willing to open higher value channels. This 1.1 spec proposal will allow such participants to set a bit named Wombo to indicate their willingness to accept larger channels and larger in-channel in payments. For more information, see following threads 1 and 2. And for etymolog etymological references, the name Wombo appears to come from a segment of the SpongeBob SquarePants cartoon where an M is interpreted as standing for mini and is inverted into a W and redefined as standing for Wombo. Hidden, trend, hidden destinations. Lightning Network payments currently route payments using an onion method similar to sending data over a Tor exit node. Alice wants to ultimately pay Z. 
So she finds a path to him through Bob, Charlie, and Dan. To prevent the intermediaries from learning about anything but the two channels, they route through, for example, Charlene, known about Bob and Dan. Alice encrypts each step of the payment so that only the next step is disclosed for each recipient. When Sed ultimately receives a payment, he can simply return the success pre-image to Dan, who returns it to Charlene and so forth back to Alice. However, Tor also has a hidden service mode where both the sender and the recipient each choose part of the path so that neither of them can determine exactly where the packet came from or went, providing significant improvements to privacy. This proposal for Lightning Network mirror may that mirrors that mode. Alice will still choose Bob, Charlie, and Dan, but Zed can prevent Alice from learning about his route by choosing Edmund, Fran, and George. Zed provides information about how to find Edmund to Alice, but the information about Fran and George and Zed's own note is encrypted so that Alice cannot see it. This can allow hidden channels a current feature of several Lightning Network implementations to stay hidden even when routing payments from, arbitrator, from arbitrary spenders. This feature is also called rendezvous routing. For more information, see the description on the Lightning Network protocol documentation wiki and see also the following mailing list threads 1, 2, and 3. Although discussed at the summit, the proposed 1.1 goals do not directly address watchtowers that help protect channels for users that are currently offline. Autopilot that helps that help users open their initial payment channel or deterministic pre-image generation that allow private keys to stay offline while an online component simply completes acceptance of payments. These are services that can be built on top of the protocol and so don't currently require any coordination between implementations. News. Slowed block production, increased fees. As widely reported, several miners and mining pools are producing blocks for competing forks of Bcash when they could likely earn greater revenues by creating blocks for Bitcoin. This is a likely cause of an approximate 7% reduction in Bitcoin's difficulty over the retargeting period ending Friday and may mean additional decrease in Bitcoin hash rate and difficulty for an unknown length of time. Relevant consequences for Bitcoin businesses include slower confirmation time. The average time between blocks may increase moderately to 11 or 12 minutes. And the chance of these being a long wait between blocks will increase significantly in relative percentages. For example, with historically typical 9-minute average block intervals, about 0.7% of blocks will take more than 45 minutes. With a 12-minute interval, 2.3% take more than 45 minutes. Recommendation. Bitcoin users are already familiar with occasional long delays, so likely no action is needed. Possibly increased fees. A longer time between finding blocks means less space for transactions, which can cause fee increases. Occasional long waits between blocks also tend to create sudden fee spikes that can persist for hours afterwards. Recommendation ensures your fee estimation is working correctly and consider preparing any fee reduction measures you're willing to use, such as payment batching. Increased revenues for profit maximizing miners. Miners not only profit from increased fees, but each time Bitcoin's difficulty adjusts downwards, mining becomes more profitable for Bitcoin miners. All other things being equal. Recommendation, do the math on reactivating slightly old miners and overclocking current miners 
With the recent price drop, this might instead mean you do not turn not you do not need to turn off a miner that would have otherwise be unprofitable uh, to operate. Possible sudden end. It is possible a large set of ideological miners producing blocks for Bcash will return to mining for the most profitable chain at roughly the same time. Combined with any past difficulty decrease, this could produce a series of Bitcoin blocks with shorter average time between blocks than normal. This will likely wipe out any moderate backlog and allow fees to drop to their default minimums. Recommendations. Consider preparing to perform fee-reducing input consolidations if fees drop to their minimums. Lightning Network Protocol Discussion. Over 75 emails have been proposed to the Lightning Dev mailing list in the past week, representing almost 10% of the list's traffic in the past year. Many of the threat continue conversation started at the Protocol Developer Summit, and if you're interested in Lightning Protocol development, we suggest reading each of this month's threats. LND enters release cycle for version 0.5.1. Experienced users of the LND implementation may wish to test this pre release to help find any last minute problems before the final release of this maintenance update. Optech News. The second Optech workshop held in Paris, as announced in newsletter number 12, was held. We held our second workshop in Paris last week. There were 24 engineers from Bitcoin companies and open source projects in attendance. And we had great discussions about wallet de descriptors, partially signed Bitcoin transactions, lightning integration, taproot, coin selection, and fee bumping. Huge thanks to Ledger for hosting and helping with organizations. If you work at a member company and have any requests or suggestions for future Optech events, such as location, venue, dates, formats, topics, or anything else, please contact us. We're here to help our member companies, and I would add anyone in the Bitcoin open source ecosystem. Thank you, Optech. Notable code changes. This week in Bitcoin Core, LND and C Lightning and Lipsec 256K1. C Lightning merge adds support for plugins. As their documentation described, plugins are a simple yet powerful way to extend the functionality provided by C Lightning. They are sub processes that start by the main Lightning D daemon and can interact with Lightning D in a variety of ways. At present, plugins can add command line options to the main process, but there are plans to allow them to add new JSON RPC commands, receive events, and insert code to be called by hooks in the main project. A Hello World plugin written in Python is provided in the C Lightning as an example. Bitcoin Core Merge, the list transaction RPC, has its filter parameter partially restored, making it possible to retrieve a list of the transaction sent to addresses or scripts with a particular label. And this has been backported to version 0.17 branch in this pull request, and it is expected to be distributed in the next maintenance release. A LND commit adds another essential portion of Watchtower support, specifically the ability to detect that an attacker has made an on-chain attempt to steal funds from one of the Watchtower's users. The Watchtower can use the information from the on-chain transaction to decrypt a breach remedy transaction previously provided by the victim in order to both negate the attack and penalize the attacker by claiming any funds the attacker legitimately owned in the channel. In the current implementation, the watchtower receives a percentage of the recovered funds to compensate for its diligent monitoring.
This merge is an extension of these two pull requests described in newsletter 19 and is a major step towards making LD safer for everyday users. A special thanks. We would like to thank Christian Decker, Practical Swift, and Rene Picard for providing suggestions or answering questions related to the content of this newsletter. Any remaining errors are entirely the fault of the newsletter's author. Piers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter, otherwise you would miss all this very, very valuable information. And as usual, thank you very much for all the parts and individuals supporting the Bitcoin Optech news group. Piers, thank you very much for joining and see you on the next reading. Bye-bye.